Welcome to the United Church of Hayworth. We're glad that you're here today. This is special because we have people with us today, so we're doing both. We have a real live audience and those of you joining us online. Uh, we had uh, called and asked for people to make reservations, and I had a lot of you who are watching online call me and say, we're going to be watching online, and that means the world to us to know that you're out there. And uh, so if you're watching online or listening on Podbean later, um, let us know, say hello, and uh, we will uh, keep track of this. So for all the boys and girls and all the children of God, we go to the children's message. Well, one day my wife and I were in the Walmart parking lot, and this is when all my girls, all four of the girls, were in grade school yet. And one of my daughters, my youngest one, uh, wasn't paying attention. She was reading a book or coloring or doing something to keep herself busy and, and being quiet, which was wonderful. But then she looked up and she saw that mom was gone. And she looked up and she said, where's mom? And I said, truth or story? Now, my family growing up, the girls knew that story meant dad's going to make one up. So I could have simply said, your mother went into the Walmart. But the girls said, story. So I said, oh, didn't you see? Didn't you see? It was an amazing thing. Didn't you see the, the, the spaceship come down from outer space? You didn't see the little green men spiral down on the beams of light on rainbow-colored unicorns? You didn't see the little green men lasso your mom with golden chariots? You didn't see that? And do you know the only reason, the only reason we are still riding around the Walmart parking lot is I live in the hope that I'll see your mother again? <laughs> so when I got to the door and my wife comes out, I said, oh, there she is. And so she gets in the car and I said, did you get rope burns from the golden chair, the golden lassos? And she knows that there's something up and she goes, no, I'm doing really well. You, you see, there's a difference between truth and story. And sometimes stories are a lot of fun, but today in our service, we're going to be looking at truth and story. And uh, it's something for us to think about. I'm going to ask you now, since I got the order of worship out of order a little bit, to take some time now as you think about the truths in your lives and the stories you deal with. Settle down and to center down and listen as we hear, take my life and let it be.
Let us pray. Open our ears, O God, that we might hear your word speaking to us in this moment. Open our ears, O God, that we might listen for your voice calling to us through the scripture. Open our ears, O God, that we might understand your promises to followers both old and young, ancient and modern. Open our hearts, O God, that we might enter into the love you offer us. Amen. Please listen now to our praise team as they sing. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty heavens, praise him, all the earth praise him. Praise him in his awesome power, praise his great and holy name, praise him, the whole world praise him. From the rising of the sun, let his praise be heard. From the east to the west, and the north to the south, let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the mighty heavens. Praise Him. All the earth praise Him. Praise Him in His awesome power. Praise His great and holy name. Praise Him. The whole earth praise Him. From the rising of the sun, let His praise be heard. From the east to the west, and the north to the south, let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From the rising of the sun, let his praise be heard. From the east to the west, and the north to the south, let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Wonderful. 
Lord, I simply come. I offer up my life, a living sacrifice to you. Let this be my I simply come. Let this be my so much. We come now to our first scripture reading. This is the call of the boy Samuel. God can begin to work in people's lives anytime God wants to. And the boy Samuel uh, hasn't even really got acquainted with God yet. And um, well, this is how this all works out. Now, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down within the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli. And he said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord again And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli, perceiving that the Lord was calling the boy, therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he speaks to you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood forth, calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for thy servant hears. And here ends the reading of the Hebrew Scripture for this day. For those of us who have had children or been children, we remember bedtime sometimes not being always the smoothest time of the day. There was always somebody who needed a drink of water. There was always somebody who needed another story told. Or somebody who said, but I'm not tired yet. I find it fascinating that in the Bible, we have this kind of story of Samuel, who is telling and getting up and answering what he thinks is Eli. I think it just strikes of the experiences of our own lives. I want to take a a special moment today to talk to you about the Human Relations Day offering. There are six church-wide offerings in the uh, United Methodist Church. This is the first one of the year. This always falls on the Martin Luther King uh, weekend, birthday weekend. And I'm going to read this to you. Um, Human Relations Day is one of six church-wide special offerings with offerings of the United Methodist Church. Human Relations Day calls United Methodists to recognize the right of all God's children in realizing their potential as human beings in relationships with one another. The special offering benefits neighborhood ministries through community developers, community advocacy through the United Methodist Volunteer Services, and work at risk teens through the Youth Offender Rehabilitation Program. So the community developer program gets 57% or 57 cents out of every dollar. Uh, the United Methodist Volunteer Service Program gets 33 cents out of every dollar, 
and the Youth Offender Rehabilitation Program gets 10 cents out of every dollar. This is an example and a way in which we go beyond our own local church. It is easy sometimes to become, it's all about us. But this is an opportunity for us to go beyond our doors, our community, and, and to help out the general church. Your generosity is appreciated. The offering plates are in the back. Let us pray. Our Lord, our God, it is so good to be here with people, with people on the floor. We, I have so enjoyed and appreciated the worship team in these weeks that have been with us and led us in worship as we've watched online and listened. But Lord, to have the worship team and these folks here together is wonderful. Thank you, God, that you created us in such a way that you want us to be in relationship with each other. We remember, O oh Lord, uh, from Genesis, how you said it is not good that man should be alone. We are grateful, God, for family and friends and being here in this church today to be in community once again. We are grateful, O oh God, for uh, this opportunity to worship you and to praise you. We think especially of the boy Samuel and how you work with boys and girls and, and all of us. And you call us at different times and places in our lives. We thank you, God, that there have been in our lives Sunday school teachers and parents and grandparents and so many others who have come alongside and helped us to understand more and more about you. We pray that as we continue to grow in years and in knowledge of your spirit, that we would continue to listen to your call in our lives on a daily basis. Because you call us and you call us because you love us and we love each other because you first loved us. We thank you, God, that you could we can be here and we're grateful that we can praise you and worship you. And Lord, we, well, we're just kind of amazed by it right now. And we want you to know that we want to be more and more like you. You know, when we compare ourselves to other people, Lord, we measure up pretty well. But when we set the bar at being like Jesus, we aim at it. We strive, O oh God, to be like Jesus in all of our lives. But we also know there are times we fall short. We don't quite make it that high. There are times that we're tempted to not even try. There are times we're tempted to do whatever we want to do. And we get our eyes off of that prize and off of that goal. And we would pray that you would help us to fight temptation to turn away and find a new alternative. But Lord, there are times that we fail. Forgive us and strengthen us and help us to amend our lives. Because while we still aim and we still have those moments, we still trust you. We still confess our faith to you. We still believe in the good times and in the worst of times, we still believe Lord, we, as your forgiven children, can talk to you about things that are important to us. There are things we are grateful for, for the beauty of this earth, for this church building, this sacred space that we have. We thank you. We thank you for all the blessings of this life. We would lift up to you this day those who are hurting. We have had a request for a couple who are suffering from COVID in the Mattoon area. We pray, O oh God, that they would be in the process of healing. And Lord, there are people that all of us know, maybe not here, maybe in other places, who are hurting with COVID and cancer and heart disease and diabetes and all these illnesses and ailments. We know, Lord, that there are those who are dealing with the problems of dementia and Alzheimer's. We know that there are people who are seeking to be their caretakers. 
and we know the challenges of not being able to go visit them because of we're trying to protect them. Lord, we pray especially for those who are lonely and discouraged this day. We pray that they would know of our love and our prayers and that we would back that up with our action. Lord, we also know that there are other churches this day who are meeting again for the first time, one that I know of with a new leader. We pray, Father, for this pastor and for this congregation that there will be a a new beginning of following and leading. There will be a new beginning of ministry since things have been so different for so long. Father, for this day, sometimes on this day we look back over the week and reflect on it. And sometimes on this day we look forward to the week and we see all that's on our calendar. We've, we've got things planned, we've got things to do and places to go and people to see. But we also don't know exactly what's going to happen this week. Oh God, we pray that you would give us strength. We do know that there's an inauguration that's supposed to happen and we pray because your word tells us to pray for our leaders. So we pray for those who are coming in and we pray for those who are going out. And we pray for our nation as it deals with this transition of power. We pray, God, that your good spirit would be upon those who are working at the inauguration. We think of the Illinois National Guard, so many first responders who we don't need every day, but when we need them, we need them now. Father, watch over us, help us as a congregation to be agents of your love and peace and reconciliation. These things we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to our next scripture reading. This is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. And he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethesda, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? <clears throat> Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You shall see greater things than this. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And here is the reading of the gospel for this day. May God add his blessing and reading to this his most holy word. Amen. Thank you. Calling all skeptics, calling all skeptics. Here we go, calling all skeptics. And doesn't it happen in our lives where there are people who are kind of skeptical? They don't know if it's true or if it's a story because sometimes the story sounds so reasonable, so rational that maybe, maybe it is true that the story is true, but maybe it's not true. And we have this time when we're kind of not certain. And Nathaniel, Nathaniel's a skeptic. 
Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, let's go to the next slide. Now, here we have a map of Galilee in the time of Jesus. Uh, and I have a pointer, which is fun. Jesus came and grew up in the city of Nazareth. Nathaniel is allegedly to come from Cana, Cana of Galilee. This is where the first miracle is. In the wedding feast of Cana of Galilee, Jesus turns the water into wine. Uh, also, you'll see here on the map, uh, Gennesaret, which is the demoniac of, of, uh, of Gennesaret, and then you have Capernaum, which is the base operation headquarters of Jesus' ministry. Now, uh, I have not been to Israel, but I can read a map. And um, Nazareth and Cana are about four miles apart. Has anybody been to you, Somebody? Anybody here been to Israel? About four miles apart? Three, four miles apart? Kind of, sort of, close? Okay, good. You ever, now I have lived in uh, Illinois for a while now, and I have lived in a number of different communities in Illinois, and uh, anybody ever been in a community where there's some rivalry between neighboring towns? I got a hand, I got a witness, huh? I got people all over. Uh, sometimes it's based on football. Football teams, and my football team is better than your football team, and my school is better than your school, and, and we have that kind of rivalry. Um, now, I was in the Army for 20 years, and there is an Army-Navy football game that happens every year. Oh, my stars, go Navy, beat, you know, go Army, beat Navy, and, and all that. And, and there's rivalry. There's a sense of pride in a community. There's a sense of pride in my service. There's a sense of pride in my team. And, and, and pride can be a wonderful thing, but sometimes it can be detrimental. As some of us have had the experience, whether with children of our own or other children, uh, as a teacher or a coach or a Boy Scout leader or something, there's a child who's trying to learn something they never knew before. And it's so hard I just don't get it. Some of us have, have been there ourselves, haven't we? There's some boy in the Boy Scouts who just can't tie a square knot no matter how hard they try. And, and then finally, finally the day comes when they do it just right and they go, I did it. Or maybe there's somebody taking a music lesson and they can't do the arpeggio to save their lives. And then suddenly they do the arpeggio and they feel so good because they did it. But they don't say, I am the best piano player since Liberace. Because then the pride goes to something else, doesn't it? You see, there's a pride that I've done a good job. I've learned a new skill. I could learn it. I, I did learn it. I, I was able to do that. And that kind of pride is wonderful and it's healthy and it's marvelous. But when you think that you're all that and a bag of chips, not so helpful. Not so helpful. And Nathaniel is thinking his town is way better than the town Jesus came from. Now, we don't know. We honestly don't know why they think that. But we do know that, uh, we do know that there is some sort of rivalry or something that's going on. Now, I said that uh, Nathaniel was a skeptic, and, and I think it'd be helpful for us to have some definitions. A skeptic is a person inclined to question or doubt all accepted opinions. I have questions about it. Now, aren't there people that you know who are kind of skeptical about Christianity? There are certain things that we believe as Christians that people go, oh, I'm not sure that's not just a big story. I'm not sure that's really the truth. And so people come and they're skeptical and they come with questions and I love that. I love that when people come with questions because it means you're growing in your faith. I think I understand, but I don't 
understand it. And so sometimes you may go to our library and you might check out a book and you might read something and study something. And, and what did that mean then? And what does it mean now? And what does it mean for me? And somebody is growing in their faith. And that's a marvelous thing. It's a marvelous thing. There's some doubts, but if the doubt and the inclined to question or doubt accepted opinions, if it leads us to the truth, if it leads us to knowledge, wonderful. But sometimes we just decide to be skeptics. I don't know and I don't care. And I'm not even going to find out. Beats me. I don't know. The next question, next word I have defined here is a bigot. A person who is intolerant toward those holding different opinions or a prejudiced person. Now it's interesting, this is Martin Luther King's birthday weekend. And it's interesting that Jesus is dealing face to face with a person who's kind of skeptic about his coming from Nazareth and, and maybe even a little bigoted about his own um, toleration for Jesus possibly coming from Nazareth. You see, sometimes we think about bigots and we think, um, for those of us who are a little older maybe, we remember Archie Bunker from All in the Family. We think about George Jefferson from uh, Moving On Up, I think it is. We think about people who are bigoted racially. Or we may talk about big, people who are bigoted about men and women, about gender. But sometimes we see it even within our own community and own communities in terms of different places I've lived. You wouldn't dare date a girl on that side of the tracks. And here we have Jesus and Nathaniel, who live four miles apart. And there's some sense of skepticism and maybe a little bit of bigotry. And Jesus deals with him. And Jesus can deal with us. That pride makes a difference. You ever met anybody from Texas? Texas are proud of being from Texas. One of their mottos is, don't mess with Texas. Okay, first of all, I don't know anybody who was going to. I really doubt that the Oklahoma National Guard is massing on the northern border of the state. But there's this sense about if I'm from Texas, well, I just am. It is amazing how our pride makes a difference and our prejudice comes out in so many different ways sometimes. But what brings it out? For Nathaniel, it's hearing this. Would you be so kind? We found the one! The one we've been waiting for, the one we've been reading about and studying about for hundreds and thousands of years. We've been waiting for the Messiah and we have found the one that was written about by Moses in the law. Even as early as Genesis in the fall, in the Garden of Eden, there is a promise by God that there is one who will hurt his heel, but he will crush his head. There is a Messiah who is going to come and destroy Satan. Even as early as Genesis 3, there's this idea that there's going to be a Messiah who's going to come, and they have read it and studied it all their lives. And didn't we just get done with Christmas? And all the prophecies about Jesus coming? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And wasn't that a prophecy? Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And his Wasn't that a prophecy? And all the things that the prophets wrote and all the things that Moses in the law has, 
All of those things that they had studied and, and trusted and believed in for all these years, that there's going to come one who's come, going to come, and we have found the one. And Philip tells Nathaniel, we found him. Now, it's interesting, in, earlier in the chapter, Andrew finds Peter and tells him about Jesus. Philip finds out about Jesus and goes and tells Nathaniel. We have found the one, Moses, the prophets. And, and remember, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus is there and he's transfigured. And who is there? Moses and Elijah. And Elijah represents the greatest of the prophets of Israel because Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. And we see it again, and we'll see it again in his life, that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Except then Philip says this one thing about Jesus of Nazareth, the son of David. And Nazareth puts him over the edge. There's a question and answer that happens. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? People come with their questions. People come with their skepticism. Maybe even a little bigotry. Maybe even doubts. But maybe it will help to find knowledge. And do you see what Philip says? Come and see. Now, sometimes in the Bible, it's really important that we look at what the Bible says, but it's also important that we look at what the Bible doesn't say. Philip does not say, well, here's five different reasons why you should believe that Jesus is the Messiah. He doesn't argue with him. He doesn't quote scripture to him. He could, but he doesn't. He simply says to him, come and see. Come check it out. Come bring your questions. Come and see. And there's an invitation, and, and I will tell you that I don't know all the answers, but I know some really great places we could look together for those answers, for some of the questions of faith. I know a lot of them, but I don't know all of them. Come and see. And, and more people have come to faith by an invitation of care and concern. Way more than by those who've been argued into the faith. Because if you're argued into the faith, then you have to admit you're wrong. But to encounter Jesus, to come and see, changes us. Changes us. Enter Jesus. And Jesus says to Nathaniel, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. It's a compliment. Now, if you're skeptical, if you're wondering if there's anything good that's coming out of Nazareth, and this person comes up to you and gives you a compliment, it's going to take you off guard a little bit. But there's something powerful about that compliment. Because what it's saying to Nathaniel is, I know that you are a person of integrity. What you read and study and believe is what you live. There's no falsehood in you. There's no guile in you. You really try to live what you study and what you believe. And it's a compliment. Followed by Philip's, Nathaniel's question, how do you know me? Now, this is where we got to pause. Jesus is all knowing. Jesus knows Nathaniel's thoughts, Jesus knows Nathaniel's imagination. He knows his fantasies. He knows everything that's going on inside his little pumpkin head. The interesting thing is, he knows everything that's going on inside of our pumpkin heads too. Omniscient, all-knowing, the all-knowing God. How do you know me? I saw you under the fig tree. Before, before, Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Now, 
Let's understand that. You got a picture of a fig tree up. Fig tree is a sacred space for many Jews. It is under the fig tree where many Jews pray and meditate. Meditation is positive worrying. If you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. We worry about things that might happen. What if this happens? What if that happens? We mull it over in our minds, go over and over it in our minds, and we worry. We know how to worry. Many of us know how to worry really well. To meditate is to make that positive. God loves me. God loves me every day. And we mull that over in our lives. That's meditation as opposed to worry, thinking it through. And see, Nathaniel is in his sacred space. He's under the fig tree, very common in Judaism, to be under the fig tree, to be under the shade of the fig tree. And, and so many of us have sacred spaces in our homes, maybe in our pickup truck. We have a place where we read, where we pray, where we study. In the old days, we used to talk about going to your prayer closet. There was a sacred space, and for Nathaniel, under the fig tree was a sacred space. This sanctuary is a sacred space where we pray and read the Bible and learn about our faith. This is a sacred space. Under the fig tree was a sacred space. And Jesus, who is all-knowing, knows his prayers and his hopes and his dreams and his aspirations and his frustrations and his problems. He knows everything about him. And Jesus still loves him. And Jesus still loves us, even when he knows us inside out. Nathaniel, Nathaniel has a response. Go to the next slide. Rabbi, teacher, you are the son of God because you know me inside out. You are the king of Israel. He's thinking King David. We're going to have, we're going to go back to the day. When Israel's a nation and Rome isn't going to be in charge of us anymore, we're going to have King Jesus on the throne, just like we used to have King David. You are the Son of God. That all-knowingness of, of Jesus comes out again in, in the woman at the well, the story of the woman at the well. The man you're with right now isn't your husband. As a matter of fact, you've had four or five husbands. Jesus knew it. It was a supernatural knowledge. Now, if I had the ability to read your minds, that might be spooky for you. Oh, I know what you're dealing with. I know what you're dealing with. I know what you're dealing with. I might even be able to get an act in Las Vegas. But Jesus knows us inside out and still loves us and still works with us. Nathaniel is saying, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. But Jesus says something else. But we've got to understand where he's coming from. He says something about the angels ascending and descending on him. And let's go back to Genesis. Genesis 28, 10 through 12, Jacob. Verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had already set. Taking one of the stones there in that place, he put it under his head and lay down in the place to sleep. That's a hard pillow. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Ah, oh. John chapter 1, 51. And he, Jesus, said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, Nathanael, you, all you disciples, will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Not on the earth, like Genesis, but on the Son of Man. Jesus is saying, you're going to see angels ascend and descend on me. You haven't seen anything yet, Nathanael. You haven't seen anything yet. And in this encounter, 
Jesus takes this person who's a skeptic. He starts as a skeptic. He becomes a seeker. And then he lives as a servant. I will follow you. I will proclaim who you are. And because you know me inside out and you still love me, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you like Philip is following you. I'm going to follow you like Andrew's following you. I'm going to follow you like Peter's following you. I'm going to follow you. This week, you may run into somebody who's skeptical. Skeptical about the faith. Skeptical about life. I'm going to urge you not to argue with them. I'm just going to tell you to do like Philip. Tell them to come and see. Help them to find the answers they're looking for. Help them to grow. May we be ready and aware of those who need Jesus to make their lives so very different. Let us pray. Eternal God, in our lives we need time and places to talk to you, a time of devotion, a place of devotion. We need to be under the fig tree. And in this sacred space this day, we have come once again. Some have, are sitting in their living rooms and other places in their homes, listening to and watching this service. There are many of us who are here this day. You are not limited by technology, by time or space or distance. Oh God, all-knowing God, who loves us from the inside out and loves us still, we pray that this week, whatever comes, that you would help us to hear you call to us to be of help, to seek to do good to those around about us. Help us, O oh Lord, to hear your call. Amen. Praise team and I are going to sing, Here I Am, Lord. Thank you.
said, follow me and come and see how we can change the world. Let us follow Jesus and see what happens next. Amen. Amen.